Okay, how many of you are completely bored out of your skull? Come on, it's not a trick question. There we go. We got a brave soul there. Listen, I'm gonna keep this rather, at one level, preposterous, right? I'm gonna challenge the status quo, convention, and or the usual way of thinking. So, I want to ask you, you guys have learned about or heard about leadership, about what HR is looking for, about technology, about education system, and you've heard from some of the most accomplished leaders of our industry. And so let me ask you a little bit of a trick question. How many of you are hoping that, you know, once you graduate, I really wish I have a great, great job working with one of these big companies? Let's see show of hands. Okay, so now here comes the preposterous part, right? How many of you want to change the world? That's equal measure, you guys are bullshitting. I'm sorry I'm allowed to use these words, it's my conference. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you why I ask you this question. Do you see the environment we are in? it's as close to a garage as can get. Do you go to a garage to get a job? Or do you go to the garage to change the world? So I want to ask you, really, why is it that not more of you want to change the world? And instead of asking why should I change the world, why not ask why not? And I'll tell you one more reason. Our education system is broken. With all respect to Ledger and all the professionals who have grace this but our education system is broken our education system is from the past industrial age it is not cut out for dealing with the future how many of you feel that you are in college you said our education is kaput man it doesn't work we can ask all the questions in the world the reason we have all the questions in the world at sometimes to the uh, you know academia or seniors is like this doesn't make sense why do i have one lab vis-a-vis -vis six courses our education system from school days forget college from school days upward is completely broken the reason it is broken is not because our teachers are bad the reason it is broken is not because the subjects that they are teaching is not relevant the reason it's broken is not because the rigor of engineering education or the rigor of education to help you analyze and think through a problem is not important. All of those are important. But it's broken because it puts you in a silo. Each segment of our education or each subject that you learn or each discipline that you follow, you are following in a silo. Do you live in a silo? I mean, too often you hear about work-life balance and, you know, my professional life is separate from my personal life. Is it? I mean, we are all human beings. Our life is one continuum. Why does it have to be so separate? And that is the question I ask. Do you look for a job or do you want to change the world? Our education system, our entire premise is based on can you get a job to lead a simple productive happy life and there's nothing wrong with that by all means and I am being contrarian to be provocative I am not necessarily saying this is the only way to think about it but I'm deliberately being contrarian to be provocative so here is two three aspects the reason these silos of education don't work is because they are from the industrial age where continuously and increasingly the focus was always on specialization. Specialization and more specialization. We wanted to create people who could handle highly specialized tasks. Then we can put them in an assembly line and we can create mass productions and or new products. The digital revolution which is already here will not allow you to do so. It just will not allow you to be in a silo for a simple reason. 
even if you are working for a, let's say, chemical company, unless you understand data analytics, you will not be able to invent new chemistry. Unless you understand IoT, you will not be able to understand how to automate the process and remove the human error from it. Unless you deploy and understand machine learning, there is no chance that we will have the productivity increases that we've had through the industrial age. We had tremendous, tremendous productivity increase across all industries in the industrial age because of mechanization and, uh, and super specialization. But today, chemistry is no longer about chemistry. Chemistry and the innovation or engineering and innovation is going to happen at the margin. Margin of multiple disciplines. If you are a specialist or a super specialist only in a single discipline, yes, you will have a career by all means. For sure you will have a career because the world is growing and the needs across the globe are growing. But to be able to be truly successful, and when I say successful is, did you change the world in some measurable, impactful manner? If you want to change the world, you will have to work on the margins. And that means you can't stay so-called focused. Don't be focused. If you are focused only on a singular subject, if you are focused on only on singular aspect of it, you are not looking at the margins. The innovation, the invention, the new ideas in every industry, in every industry are happening only at the margins or what I call the cross between two verticals or the cross between two disciplines. And there is no better time. As a matter of fact, there is no possibility of, for us to progress living in the digital revolution but to look at the margins because that's where the innovations are, that's where the inventions are, that's where life-changing possibilities are. So how do you look at margins? I will quote Einstein. Einstein said, imagination is far more important than knowledge. Imagination is far more important than knowledge and this is from our foremost and the greatest scientist of past 200 years. And you see again, he was not constrained by a super specialization in a given area. He did hot experiments to discover relativity. If you use your imagination, you will see life-changing possibilities at the crossroads or at the margins of multiple disciplines. I'll give you another example. Yesterday, or day before yesterday, Mukesh Ambani, he said, data is the new oil. Can you see the irony and the incredible profundity of this statement? Data is the new oil. This is from a man who is probably the single highest invested person in terms of oil. He has invested maybe $45 billion over the last 25 years in oil and oil related business. He gets up on stage and says, you know what, data is the new oil. Again, he is talking about that margin or the fringe or the cross where analytics, IoT, machine learning, new discoveries, new chemistries come into play on some of the existing uh, raw materials. So here is what I want to suggest to you. You've heard innovation, right? Innovation's good, but invention is far better. Innovation will give you incremental change. Invention will change the world. And there are only two ways to do this. One, Use your imagination to look at the margin and the larger picture. That is fundamental and profound. If you are able to see the, if you are able to imagine a different world, you will be able to change it. And second, 
don't be focused but be determinedly crazy to follow your imagination so that's a contrary view good luck thank you